Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for each person that's listening right now, Lord, and we just pray that we would put aside our cares and our concerns, Lord, and turn to you, the one that's only one that's big enough to help with us our, with our problems anyway. We pray, Lord, that you use Pastor Izzy to speak to each one of us, to encourage us. Lord, help us to be boots on the ground this coming week, Lord, that we would be able to share the good news uh, that we hear from your word this morning. We ask that now in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. Amen. Well, guys, would you grab your Bibles and turn to 1 Corinthians 15? And that's what we really want to do, because... We're at the part of Scripture that, to me, the depth of this passage is, is it, you know how people use a description of a, an onion having those multiple layers, you know, and you go layer and layer deeper and deeper and deeper. This particular passage, you could read through it one time and get a lot out. But if you do it, peel back a layer and go a little deeper and then a little deeper on each part of it, you start to notice things that, like a real depth to the faith. And I, s I highly recommend that for your faith, you take the time to reread this chapter over and over a few times and ask the Holy Spirit to show you some of the deeper layers in this thing because this is really the crux of all Christian faith is found in this chapter. The very basis, the very reason for us to be Christians um, is explained in this passage. I mean, th th this is like Paul summing up in true fashion what is so important about being a Christian. And so we saw this. I have to, for those of you who weren't with us, if you look at verse 3, Paul started by saying, For I delivered to you as of first importance. The first important thing I delivered to you, O church at Corinth, was that this what I also received, he said, that Christ died for what? for our sins, according to the scripture. And then he also says in that Christ was buried and that he was raised on the third day, all according to the scripture. So we broke that down over the last few weeks of Christ dying for our sins, according to the scriptures. Where did the scriptures say that the Messiah would die for our sins? Where did it say he'd be buried for our sins, according to the scripture? Where did it say he would rise from the dead? But now we come to the verses that we got, we had to end last week on just the following verse, verse 4, that, or, I'm sorry, verse 5, that said that he, and that Christ appeared first to Cephas, what was, P uh, sorry, I just gave it away, sorry, I was going to try to get you there. What was Cephas' other name? Peter. Peter, first he appeared to Peter, it says, and then also to the twelve. And so, we went over those two. That's all we had time for. Is, I mean, we went to the scripture. Where, where, did, where did Jesus appear to Peter? And so after the sermon last week, someone came and said, I have never seen that. I, I never caught on that Peter was one of the fellows on the road that day that, you know, took off with Cleopas and headed out of town seven miles, and Jesus met him on the road and started talking to him. It, it's in the text, but people don't read. I don't know. Well, it's because it uses a different name. It says his name was called Simon. And I went over that last week in the passage, Simon, which I have example. As I'm a good teacher, a visual aid. See the sand over there where the water's going like this back and forth with the ocean? That's called Simon. It's the sand in Hebrew that moves with the water back for shifting sand. It's not a very nice name. Don't name your kid Simon, please. Simon says, shifty sand says. It's a bad name, man, but Jesus said, no longer will you be ca called Shifting Sand. Can you imagine your whole life? What's your name, Shifting Sand? <laughs> you don't really probably have a great self-image, you know? Jesus says, no longer are we going to call you that. We're going to call you some, something different, Petra, which is uh, Petras, which is what? A rock. Change you from Shifty to a rock. You know, I like how Jesus meets us where we're at, but knows, hey, I ain't leaving you there. You're going to be terrible. You know, let me fix that. And so the Lord changes his name. Now, some people didn't know that his name changed by the Lord. In some, in some passages, they refer to him 
by Simon, Simon Peter, or they, that's the English name, by the way, for Cephas is Peter, but they might be referring to him by his Greek name, Cephas, and so you'd be like, I'm confused. It's all the same guy. It's like if you told them about me, is, is he, Isidoro, my full name, which hardly anyone knows here, but if you, it, if you, it wouldn't matter to me which one you said, because it's me. And to Peter, it wouldn't matter because it's him. The story was about him. And so we saw that the Lord, that day that he rose, he appeared to Mary Magdalene, the one that had the demons, and said, go tell the disciples I'm going to meet them. And I'm alive. And remember, she <laughs> she's hanging on to him. I'm not letting you go. And he goes, let go. I have not yet what? Ascended to my father. Now, before Christ ascended, we read in the book of Acts, in chapter 1, something really interesting. Luke tells us a clue. Would you turn to Acts chapter 1? I want to show you this. As we continue to study the appearances of Jesus, Paul's going to say that Jesus first appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, and then he says after that, he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time, most of whom remain until now, but he said some have fallen asleep, using the old term for some of them had died, but up to this date when, when, the, when Paul's writing the, to the church at Corinth, he says most of those 500 folks are still alive that saw the Lord resurrected. And some folks aren't aware of this, but Luke, Luke was that doctor fellow that took great care to study and get the, do the research and um, he, he actually, in the, in the book of Acts, which I refer to as Luke 2, you've got the Gospel of Luke, which was all that Jesus did when he was on the earth that he began to do and teach and all the, the healings that he accomplished. By the way, Luke's real big on the healings. You know, he gives all the details. You know why? Because he's a doctor. So he, he, he paid close attention to Jesus doing healings, like the guy with the withered arm and all that stuff. But then he said, he wrote to Theophilus a second time, Acts, the book of Acts, or Luke 2, volume 2. And it says, and he said, the first account I composed, Theophilus, this is Acts chapter 1, verse 1, about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day when he was taken up into heaven, after he had by the Holy Spirit given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen. Now, we, we went over that part when, when, you know, he appeared that time to the apostles in the room. He said, you're going to be my witnesses when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You're going to, to, first in Jerusalem, then to Judea, Samaria, and to the remotest, what? Island of Hawaii. I mean, <laughs> part of the earth. Yes, we are the remotest from, from the Jewish perspective. We're 12 hours difference from Israel, always. We don't have daylight savings. They don't have daylight savings. It's very easy to remember the time in, in Jerusalem when you live in Hawaii. You just go, oh, what time is it now? What, uh, quarter to ten? That means it's a quarter to ten, only it's 12 hours different. That means nighttime over there. They've already finished this day. They're ahead of us. So they're on the evening of Sunday evening. It's just a cool thing. It's easy to remember. If you have, go with me to Israel and you're trying to figure out, what time should I call my family back in Hawaii. So you kind of back up 12 hours, you know, and just think, if it's night there, it's day there. If it's day there, it's night there. It's, and, you know, it's that easy. But he says, I, I told you about this, all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up. But then he says, to these he also presented to his apostles himself alive. After his sufferings, by many convincing proofs and appearing to them it says over a period of 40 days and speaking things concerning the kingdom of God gathering them together he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem but to wait for the what for the what the father had promised which he said you heard from me for John baptized you with water but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now so when they had come together they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you're going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said, it is not for you to know the times or the epochs, which the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you shall receive power to be my witnesses when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, even to the remotest parts 
of the earth. And then after he said these things, it says he was lifted up while they were looking on. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And as they were gazing intently into the sky while he was going, behold, two men in white clothing stood behind, be, or beside them and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand there looking into the sky? I like that King James here says gawking. Um, it's really close to the, to the Greek word. It means literally your mouth unhinged. When they, when they saw Jesus go up into the sky and the, you know, the cloud open and he goes right in and it says he was seated where at the right hand of the father how anyone here volunteer to just you know go with me in a time machine so you could stand on the hill and watch jesus ascend into heaven who would go with me if we had a machine that we could now nah, i'd be in that thing get get behind me you guys i'm going first i want to see i'd love to see the heavens open and see the the lord just right in front of them but some folks don't pay attention to the details. Luke was very careful to study this. He says that the Lord appeared over a period of time after his resurrection. How long was that period? Did you pick up on it? Look at verse 3. How many days? Forty. Jesus didn't come out of the grave, show to himself to Mary, show himself to the apostles, and then take off, go to heaven. I know that some people, they read um, the Gospel of Mark, and because it's kind of abbreviated, hi uh, like um, summed up highlights, they, they somehow get the perception that he did these things, he appeared, and then he took off. Well, no, Mark was summing up the whole story. You know, like, in, like you would to a child. You know, you want to give the, the highlights of the thing without going into all the details. But... Luke took the time to do the homework and found out Jesus appeared with many convincing proofs that it was him resurrected. Now, I mentioned last week one of my favorite proofs is he told them, go to, go to Galilee, I'll meet you there. And even the angel told Mary, go tell his disciples, go to Galilee. The Lord's going to appear to you. And then that same day we read about last week in, in, in Mark's gospel that Peter and Cleopas were walking on the road to Emmaus and the Lord appeared to them and started explaining how he was going to have to suffer. And he was blinded to their eyes that it was him until he did one thing. What did he do at the, at the table, guys? He blessed the bread and he broke it and he gave it to As soon as he did, they went, oh, we know who that is. Only one rabbi breaks the bread like that, blesses the bread like And they knew. And as soon as they recognized who it was, what, what happened? He, poof, he vanished. They went running back to Jerusalem. Guys, guys, the Lord has appeared to us. Now, if you read Mark's gospel, the very next passage, this is the last chapter of Mark, by the way, for you taking notes. The very last chapter of Mark 16, he, he, he says, and, and then the Lord appeared to all of them. In the, it, it says to the 11. 11. What, why only 11? Thomas is... MIA, right? Or is it Judas? Like, think about this, because Judas, you guys remember what happened in, in Matthew's gospel. Judas, after he betrayed the Lord, you know, right after Peter did the denial thing, Judas was remorseful that he had, he had betrayed Jesus. And he took the 30 pieces of silver and he went to the high priest and said, I, I, I made a mistake. And here, take it. And they said, that's blood money. And they brought a field for the uh, and they called it actually the field of blood, a part of for the paupers to be buried in. And, he's, and, and, and Judas in Matthew 27, 5, he, he went out, it says, and he hung himself. So we know Judas wasn't in the mix. But Mark says that Jesus came and appeared to them. And he says, and they were, they were together. And, uh, and he says that the Lord appeared to all 11. That means... That appearance must be the one that was eight days later from the previous. See, this is where I know he was summing up. Because if I read one of the other gospel accounts, it says that Jesus appeared to them and one guy, not Judas, was missing. Which guy was missing? Thomas. Thomas was missing, and Thomas not being there. This is, in, by the way, in John's gospel, chapter 20. John says that, 
the first appearing that Jesus did to the disciples, he said, it's me, I'm alive. He showed him his hands, and he got up some fish to eat. He ate, he showed him it wasn't a ghost, it was really a, it was him, a resurrected flesh and bone, not flesh and blood, flesh and bone, living without blood because his blood had been shed for whose sin? Ours. And he said, it's me. And then they told Thomas, and Thomas went, I don't believe you guys. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo, and God bless.